Welcome to another Big Daddy D adventure. Today we're going to be building a simple DIY crosscut sled for my new table saw. I've uh, looked around on the internet and there is a lot of information about these crosscut sleds. But uh, I went ahead and kind of kludged one together out of a couple of different designs and uh, just wanted it to be simple but effective and accurate. So here we go. We're going to start by uh, cutting some of the bigger pieces of plywood down to uh, be the size of the sled. Well, I tried to simplify the design as much as possible. Uh, what I did is I, I made the front and back bridges at three and a half inches tall. And then uh, I also have a little hand safety block on the back, also three and a half inches tall. So the only cuts I needed to rip on the uh, table saw were the base and then the pieces that I needed for the front and back bridges and the safety stop. So the next cuts up here are for the back bridges. They're uh, both of them. I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue two pieces of wood together and they're going to be both eight inches wide. Funny thing is this would have been an exact great case to have a crosscut sled. Uh, the miter is doing a good enough job for this purpose. Again, it's not a very high tolerance piece, but uh, again, could have used my crosscut sled if I had one. <laughs> Next. All right, so well, since I don't have a crosscut sled, I went ahead and went over to the chop saw for these rest of these cuts because the miter saw wouldn't cut these smaller pieces uh, on the table saw. Uh, I do prefer to use the table saw now that I have one that's pretty accurate. Uh, rather than the chop saw, just because the chop saw uh, spits so much uh, dust and debris all over the shop, even when I do have it hooked to a vacuum. Might need a future project here. Next, what I'm using is uh, I set the fence at uh, 12 inches so that the blade would be centered on the board. Then I'm just using a, a one, two, three block to uh, mark the edges of each of the slots and then where the blade is on the, on the board. All right, next is starting to do the glue up. So first thing we're going to glue up is that eight inch backboard. Again, what I'm doing is sandwiching two three quarter inch pieces of plywood together. Uh, and again, just using some wood glue and some clamps to hold them together. Uh, did move around a little bit. Uh, I have some, some seen some people use salt or sawdust on there. I might try that in the future, but uh, uh, I will tell you with the little spring clamps, they tended to wiggle around a little too much. So need to try something a little bit better next time. But uh, this did work for what I needed. All right. The next glue up is uh, the front bridge uh, that will be closest to me on the uh, sled. Uh, again, this is uh, the three and a half by I think these are 24 inches. So it's the full width of the sled. Again, just glued one side and started putting on some clamps. On this one, I did decide to use some of those coal boards to help line things up, and uh, that really did help. I kept them from squishing around too much. <laughs> so the last piece to glue up is the uh, little finger guard for the back of it. Mainly it's a block to say, hey, don't put your fingers here in the middle because that's where the saw blade's coming through if you push it all the way forward. So uh, again, uh, gluing up the blocks. This time I just, uh, again, squirted glue on one side, rubbed the blocks together to kind of smooth it out. Worked out pretty good. Uh, I also had to use all those coal blocks again. Uh, these four, especially when you got four of these stacked together, they tend to want to move around quite a bit. But uh, the coal blocks did help uh, lock everything down. Got a little extra uh, glue squeeze out here, but... Uh, Again, this is not fine furniture. <laughs> I'll uh, probably sand off a little bit of, of it later, but the uh, uh, main thing is got it together, got it glued, and it's stuck. Well, while the glue dries, I'm going to go ahead and mark up these UHMW uh, plastic bars that I got for runners. Um, all I'm doing here is just making sure that uh, both runners will have screws in about the same place. Uh, thinking about doing some future upgrades to this um, sled, so I want to make sure I know where the screws are um, a little bit later. So, uh, marked them off, uh, put the center marks in them, and then uh, I'm just uh, using a, uh, a little pilot drill here to drill them out, and then uh, also has a chamfer bit on it. Next step was try to get the uh, runners aligned properly on the board. What I'm doing here is dropping a couple of washers in the bottom of those runners, uh, those guide holes, and then just putting the runners in. Again, I want the, uh, the countersunk or the chamfered hole on the bottom, 
and then uh, saw a bunch of different ways to do this. Well, a lot of people are using CA glue. Uh, looked at some very old videos and some of them are just using just plain old scotch double stick tape. Uh, real thin stuff, but uh, we'll see if it works. Uh, pretty cheap, just happen to have it sitting around the house. So. Uh, next thing what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and bring the base over, line it up against the fence. Against the, fen the fence is still lined up for that 12-inch offset, so the board will be centered uh, on that runner. And uh, just going to push it down and see if it sticks. Well, moment of truth. Did it stick? And it did. Now that I have them in the right place, I went ahead and... Uh, just screwed them in. I did uh, run them down with a, uh, a drill, but then I tightened that last bit, uh, just screwing them in. So worked real good. Got the runners to attach to the bottom. And best of all, when I flipped it back over after screwing them in, it actually slid back and forth. I did need to put a little bit of wax on them and kind of slide it back and forth, but it worked out great. Well, after getting the runners attached to the main board, and having a lunch. Uh, the glue had enough time to dry, so I went ahead and just started breaking all the culls off and all the clamps off, and then uh, we're gonna start doing the final assembly. So before I jump into that final assembly though, I did have a little extra glue on these things and they had some sharp edges on them. So went ahead and clamped them to my little wood clamp vise here on uh, my table, and uh, went ahead and just sanded all the edges, broke the edges, and then uh, after I get done with sanding it uh, on the the main beam that's going to be closest to to me, uh, I am going to go ahead and run a chamfer on that. So here I just have a 45 chamfer bit in here, and I guess I'm taking about an eighth of an inch off of that corner, just breaking the corner a little bit. I'd seen a lot of people do that online, and I kind of agreed with it. Uh, that keeps it uh, from having any dust build up right there at that corner. So whenever you push the board up against it, it's always going to be crisp and allows the board to, to sit up against the face rather than being pushed out if there's any dust at that bottom corner. All right, let's start screwing all this together. So first up is going to be that back bridge. Uh, again, it's eight inches wide. Uh, off camera, I did cut uh, 45s. I guess I cut about an inch off of each of those corners just to kind of break it up a little bit. Um, and then uh, just marked where it needed to go in the center of the board and then uh, just throwing some screws here in the back. So on this backboard, it really didn't need to be precision. Uh, again, mainly it's to support the board after you cut it in half uh, when you're using it as a sled. So uh, had to be close, uh, but it didn't have to be 100% accurate on this one. All right, time to mount the back bridge. Uh, this one actually does have to be pretty accurate, but not 100%. Uh, again, we're going to do another method over on the uh, table saw in a little bit, but uh, what I did is I used my uh, little edge finder here. I put about an eighth inch uh, back set on there. Uh, got it lined up close to this quote-unquote straight edge of the board. Again, I, I will tell you also, the back edge of this board is a... Uh, official cut of the board. It wasn't cut on my saw, it was cut on the uh, manufacturer's saw. So anyway, lined it up off that back edge and then put two screws in it and then we'll take it over the table saw and use what they call a five cut method to kind of test how accurate it is. Since this is the first time I have the table sled on my table saw, what I did is I, I removed the riving knife and then uh, put my blade down then with it sitting there and me holding it, uh, again, from the side, not where the blade comes through, I uh, went ahead and just turned the blade up to where it started cutting the base and then uh, worked it back and forth. Well, the last thing to put together here is the uh, little safety block. So what I'm doing here is uh, just marking it off, making sure that the block is centered on the board. Then uh, what I need to do is go ahead and uh, countersink some holes. This block is... Uh, four three quarters inches of, of plywood so I didn't have screws that long so I had to countersink the heads of those screws to get in there so anyway uh, mounts up pretty easy all right so we're going with the assumption that my fence here is close but not close enough so there's a thing called the the five cut method and what you do is you take a square board 
or it doesn't have to be square root. The key is, is that the fifth cut you do, uh, you want it to be as long as possible. So in my case, I, I chose about a 12 inch by 12 inch piece of uh, hardy board here. And again, first cut, you're just cutting the sliver off. Now, when you cut that, you rotate that against the fence, again, around that way. And then you make the second cut, third cut, and fourth cut. And then the fifth cut, basically you're back at the beginning, again, continuing to rotate the board in the same manner. <laughs> and then what you do is your last, your fifth cut. Uh, I was cutting mine about an inch or so wide. Uh, that way I get a, a bigger, bigger number I can read. And then the main two numbers you're going to read are what is the thickness at the top of the board and then what is the thickness of your cutoff at the bottom of the board. And then you have this calculation, I'll pop it up on the screen, that uh, you run it through. Uh, actually, I end up using a website because they had a nice calculator. I'll throw that up there on the screen too. But uh, it worked out real good. And the key is it tells you how much you need to adjust your fence to get the fence square. All right, so I used my calipers and measured my stick that I'd cut off and came up with an adjustment factor of 0 0.042 away. So I just used some, my feeler gauges. Of course, I had to add two of them together. I had a, a 0.02 plus a 0 0.022. And then what I did is I, I cut a little point on a block and I wedged that... Uh, board or, or put the feeler gauge between my adjustment board and the fence and then clamped it down. And then as soon as I get it clamped down, then what I'm going to do is unscrew the fence, remove the feeler gauge, and then push that board up against my block. And again, that's going to allow it to move that point, uh, let's see, point oh four two away from the edge. Then to lock the fence back down, I'm just going to run another pilot hole uh, up through the bottom of the board into the fence and then uh, go ahead and re-screw it and then we'll do some more test cuts. Well after doing this method a couple of times, you can see a couple extra screws on that end of the board over there. Uh, I end up coming up with about 18 thousandths of uh, difference uh, over the length of my board. So for a sled, I think this is close enough. It's good enough for government work, if you will. <laughs> and uh, I think I'm good to lock it down. So I'm just finishing up piloting all of these screw holes and then screwing them in and it's ready to go. All right, this is the sled. Nice. Keep your finger away from their block. <laughs> Saw blade comes through right here, but I really shouldn't take it much past there, so I should be pretty safe. Just to keep my finger away from it. Got my backstop here. And I got the runners. Mounted and screwed in there. Well, I hope you like seeing me build this sled for my table saw. Uh, not just showing you how I built it, but having a, some discussion about, you know, why I did certain things. And again, try to make it as easy as possible to fit on a two by four sheet of plywood. Well, thanks for coming on another workshop project adventure with me today. As usual, if you like what you saw, give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to go on more adventures with me, hit the subscribe button. As always, take care. Bye bye.